Hey everyone, my name's Trevor, and in this video we're going to run through an example of how to call c -sharp code directly from an ink dialog file using something called external functions. We'll go over what those are and when they can be useful, and for the example we'll use external functions to make this emote pop up above the NPC. We'll be starting with an ink-based dialog system that's been built up in some other tutorial videos, but you don't have to have seen those to understand what we're going to do in this video as long as you have a basic understanding of what ink is and how it integrates with Unity, which if you clicked on this very specific video, you probably do, but if not, I put a playlist in the description of this video to all of the previous tutorials I've done on this topic. And of course, everything we're going to do in this video can be found on the GitHub project, which you can find linked in the description of this video as well. And with all of that said, let's get into it. As mentioned, ink external functions are a way of calling some C-sharp code in Unity directly from the ink dialog file. How they work is actually fairly simple. You declare an external function like this in your ink dialog file, and then in your C-sharp code, you bind that function using the exact same function name declared in your ink file. Then at any point in your ink dialog, you can call the function like this, which will execute that function on the C sharp side. This can be really useful for triggering just about anything in your game from the dialog. A few examples that come to mind for me would be playing a sound or changing the audio in some way, adding or removing an inventory item, starting or finishing a quest, triggering an animation, which is actually how we're going to do the emote example later in this video, and more. You could even do things like transition to a new scene, which I've had a lot of people ask me about from my other tutorials. However, just keep in mind that when you transition to a new scene, unless you're doing additive scene loading, the current scene that's playing the dialogue will be unloaded and everything in that scene that's not marked with don't destroy unload will be destroyed. We're not going to dig into that specific use case, but I did want to mention it, and if this is something that you're trying to do and struggling to figure out, I recommend learning more about scene loading in Unity and looking into topics like don't destroy unload if you're not already familiar with them. Anyways, that's pretty much the gist of ink external functions, but if you followed some of my other tutorials or know anything about ink tags, you might be a bit confused on what ink external external functions bring to the table that ink tags can't already do. And if you're not familiar, ink tags are a way to add metadata to your ink dialog, whether that's for the entire file or just a single line of dialog. Just like external functions, it's another way of telling your C-sharp code what to do from your ink dialog file. In my own experience, tags and external functions can be used pretty interchangeably in most situations, and using one over the other typically comes down to preference. The way that I think about it is that if we're telling the code information dealing closely with a specific line in the dialog, ink tags make more sense because they represent metadata for that line. However, if we're trying to perform an action during the dialog that doesn't necessarily relate to a specific line, an ink external function makes more sense because it's more independent from the dialog line and more direct. Let's look at changing the speaker of the dialog as an example. We could argue that the speaker of the dialog deals closely with the line that's being spoken and hence change the speaker using ink tags, and at the same time we could argue that changing the speaker of the dialog is an action that has little to do with the line of dialog itself and hence change the speaker using external functions instead. Each way is a fine way to go about it, and especially starting out, I think it's best to go with your gut on whether an ink tag or an ink external function feels more or less right in any given situation. And the more you use each one, the better of a feel you'll get for what your own preferences are. And with all of that said, let's implement an external function to see how this works. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, we're going to start with a dialogue system built up in some previous tutorials, so real quick I want to cover the important parts of that relating to what we're going to do. Of course, this dialogue system uses ink and is integrated with Unity such that each NPC has their own ink dialog file associated with them, and when we talk to that NPC, it simply plays that ink dialog file through our UI. The brains behind this system is a singleton class called the Dialog Manager, which is responsible for reading through the ink story for the NPC we're talking to and also handles logic relating to that story, like making choices, keeping track of global variables, and handling ink tags. I've also already set up these exclamation and question mark emotes to save us some time, but we'll still take a look at how they work once we get to that section of the video for anybody that's curious. As for implementing an ink external function, like mentioned earlier, there are a couple parts to this that we need to set up. First, we need to declare the external function in the ink dialog file that we want to call it from. And this ink file in particular corresponds to the dialog when we talk to this green NPC. At the top, we'll declare an external function called play emote with this line here, where we're going to pass in the emote name that we want to play. Remember to save that, and then in the dialog manager code, we have this method here that happens whenever we enter dialog in our game, which is also where we're creating the ink story and listening to variable changes among some other things we always do when entering dialog for this system in particular. What we need to do here is start listening for calls to that play emote function whenever that's called in the current story. We can do this by calling current story .bind external function, then the name of that function which needs to match what we declared in the ink dialog file exactly, and then a string parameter for the emote name that we're going to pass into that function. And just to know, this parameter doesn't have to be a string and 
you can have zero or more parameters here depending on what information you need to pass along, but the important thing here is that this function binding matches what you're doing in the ink dialog file. And for now, just to see this working, we'll add a debug.log statement to print out that emote name. That handles binding the function, but there's one more thing we should do to make sure things get cleaned up properly when we exit dialog, and that's unbinding the function. This dialog system has an exit dialog mode method which always executes when dialog is finished. So in there, we'll call current story unbind external function and unbind the play emote function. That pretty much does it for setup, and now all that's left to do is actually call that function from our ink dialog file. Back in the ink file, we can call the play emote function with this line here that starts with the tilde symbol and then calls the function name, passing in whatever value we want for the emote name variable. And for now, we'll pass it an emote name of exclamation. Then we can jump into play mode to see if this is working. We'll see that when we talk to this NPC, we immediately get the console statement with the emote we wanted to play, showing that the external function is set up and working as expected. Next, let's set this up to do something a bit more interesting and have the function play these exclamation or question mark emotes. Like I briefly mentioned earlier, I've already set up these emote game objects to save us some time, but let's take a look at what's going on here. The emote game object has a child game object for the visual, which is just a sprite renderer and animator. And if we take a look at the animator, it's made up of three states, a default state, an exclamation state, and a question state. The default state sets the sprite renderer's color alpha value to zero, so the emote is hidden. The exclamation state sets the sprite as the exclamation point icon and has a short transition where we have it fade in and pop up above the NPC. There's also a slight fall at the end with some animation squishing to make it feel a bit bouncy, and then after it's appeared for a short amount of time, it simply fades back out. And last, the question animation is exactly the same, except we're using a question mark sprite instead of an exclamation point. The animator itself is set up where we automatically transition to the default state, then we can play one of the other animations from our code, and it'll automatically transition back to that default state after the animation fully plays. And just to note, since we're playing around with the transform of the emote icon visual in an animator, having it as a child to another game object ensures the adjustments are relative to that parent game object, which allows us to put this emote icon anywhere we want using the parent game object's position. For example, in this case we have the emote object as part of the NPC prefab, so that way each NPC has its own emote icon. With that already set up and our external function already set up as well, all we have to do is get a reference to the appropriate NPC emote animator and then play the corresponding animation. We could do this in a lot of different ways, and it can depend on what you're going for, but we're going to keep it simple for this tutorial and just pass it through as a parameter whenever we enter dialog mode. In the dialog manager, we can do this by adding a parameter for the emote animator when we enter dialog mode, then in the bound external function, we'll play that animator when the play emote function is called from our ink dialog, where this emote name that's passed in through the ink dialog will need to match the state name in the animator. And just to be safe, it's a good idea to ensure the emote animator is not null before calling that, because otherwise that indicates that we tried to play an emote without having set the emote animator when we enter dialog mode. So we'll give ourselves a nice warning message just in case that ever happens. Next, we just need to pass in the appropriate animator anytime we enter dialog mode. Each NPC has this dialog trigger script on them, which is what triggers the dialog specific to that NPC. So we'll open that up and add a serialized field private variable for the emote animator, and then pass in that animator when we enter dialog mode. And of course, we'll need to hook that up in the inspector as well by dragging in the emote animator for that NPC into the emote animator slot of the dialog trigger script. And then we'll also apply that change to all of the NPC prefabs so that way each one of them will be hooked up. And last, we'll go into the ink dialog file we were working in before and we'll call this external function at a couple different spots. We'll do an exclamation point when we choose the choice happy and a question mark when the NPC asks if we have more questions. And finally, we can enter play mode to check this out. And we'll see that as we go through the dialog with this NPC, the different emotes are playing just like we set them up. Hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of how to set up external functions, but there is one quirk with this that I want to cover, and that is if we try to play an external function at the very end of our dialogue, it works, but we end up with a blank line at the end of our story, resulting in an empty dialogue box at the end of the dialogue. I'm not entirely sure why this happens, but my best guess is that when we add an external function at the end of the dialogue, it needs a line to go along with it, and hence that line just ends up being an empty string. There might be a better way to go about this than what I'm going to suggest, and if I find a better way in the future, or anyone watching has a better fix, I'll be sure to include that in the pinned comment for this video. With that said, how we're going to handle this is by checking for that very specific case at the end of the ink story. In the dialog manager code, we're continuing the story in this continue story method, which ultimately continues the story, handles any tags, and then displays that line or exits the dialog if we can't continue for any reason. We can handle this empty string case for external functions by adding a conditional check here after we've gotten the next line, where we'll check to see if that line equals 
equals the empty string and the story can't continue after that. If that's the case, we'll exit dialog right there, but otherwise we'll handle tags and display the line as normal. And with that change, we can play this and we'll see that we no longer get an empty dialog panel at the end of the dialog when calling an external function. And so that's pretty much it, but as you can imagine, if we were to add a bunch of external functions, they'd start to clutter up the dialog manager class pretty quickly. It would be really nice from a clean code perspective to encapsulate all of the function bindings into their own class, kind of like we did for dialog variables if you've seen the tutorial where we implemented that. And if you haven't, don't worry, all we're going to do is create a separate class to bind and unbind our external functions so that way all of that stuff is in one place and isn't cluttering up the dialog manager. So back in Unity, we'll create a new C -sharp script called ink external functions and double click it to open it up. We can remove these placeholder methods and mono behavior since we're going to manage this class from the dialog manager rather than put it in the scene. And then we'll add a using statement for ink.runtime. And next we'll create a method called bind, which takes in a story object and the emote animator, and another method called unbind, which takes in a story object as well. And now back in the dialog manager, we can declare a private ink external functions variable up top, and then initialize it to a new ink external functions object in the awake method. Then when we enter dialog mode, we'll call ink external functions bind, passing in the current story and the emote animator, and we'll take this chunk of code that we wrote and put it in the bind method of the ink external functions class, changing the current story variable to match the passed in parameter. Likewise, back in the dialog manager in the exit dialog mode method, we'll call ink external functions dot unbind, passing in the current story, and we'll move this unbind statement to the unbind method of that class, changing that current story variable there as well. And now as you add more external functions, you can do it all in one place, which in my opinion is going to be a lot more maintainable as you expand on this. And if you wanted to take this a step further, you could instead declare the play emote function in the class as normal, and then when you do the function binding, instead of having the contents of the function there, you could just reference the function declared below. And the last thing I want to mention is actually some cleanup you may or may not want to do on the ink dialog side regarding when we declare the function. What we did here is completely fine, but if it's a really generic external function that we're going to use in multiple files, it's a good idea to declare it in one place rather than declare it for every single ink file. To do so, we can include another file where we make declarations for global items that all scripts need access to, which we already have set up from a previous tutorial, and then declare the external function there instead. With that set up, any other ink file that includes that globals file will now be able to call that external function without having to declare it multiple times. And back in play mode, we can talk to the NPCs to see this working just as it was before, but arguably the code is a bit cleaner now. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I've gotten a lot of questions about how to call C -sharp code directly from an ink dialog file in my other videos, so hopefully this acted as a good resource for how to do that. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up so more people see it, and if you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe as well. Doing so helps out this channel, and I really appreciate it. You're also welcome to come by my Discord server, which is a great place to hang out whether you're just learning about game development, working on a passion project, or just want to share what you're working on, which I'd love to see. I'm also working on a game myself, which I'm using an ink-based dialogue system for, and you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok if you'd like to follow along with that. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and I hope this was helpful.